Hunter S. Thompson wrote the gonzo journalism book Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. A Savage Journey to the Heart of the American Dream in 1971. The Mint 400 is described as the wealthiest off-road race for motorcycles and dune buggies in the history of organized sport, so journalist Raoul Duke, hired by Sports Illustrated to cover it, gathers his lawyer, Dr. Gonzo, a sizable Chevy convertible dubbed the Great Red Shark, a large bag of drugs, and departs for Las Vegas. As they relax in the womb of the desert heat, Duke and Gonzo want to find the American dream. Long before they reach Las Vegas, Duke and Gonzo start to experiment with their drug supply, and by the time they get to Barstow, California, they are already experiencing hallucinations. In the middle of a severe acid trip, they arrive at their hotel, where Duke can hardly check in among the serpent-like guests and blood-stained carpet. Gonzo and Duke go to the Mint Gun Club, the location of the Mint 400, to do some preliminary research and have a look around after Duke's hallucinations have subsided. Numerous shots may be heard as racers assemble to register even though the gun club has not cancelled target practice due to the event. Even though the race doesn't start until the morning, there are already a lot of people circulating about the venue. When Duke reaches the registration desk, a stoic guy with a rifle greets him. When Duke turns to look around, he notices that numerous onlookers are holding firearms, which makes him uneasy. Duke tells Gonzo, we're the only ones without firearms here, as they hastily flee. They go out to the casinos for the evening and come back to the club the next morning. The competitors start to take off after Duke and Gonzo pass some time at the bar, but as 200 motorcycles race into the desert, visibility soon deteriorates. Duke chooses to go back to the pub and drink excessively after driving a press car around the track and seeing nothing other than a sizable gathering of threatening nationalists brandishing a machine gun. Duke and Gonzo make the decision to visit the Desert Inn to witness a concert, but due to their boisterous conduct, they are shortly asked to leave. They take some ether and mescaline and then go to Circus Circus. When they arrive at the casino, it resembles a true zoo. Trapeze performances soar over their heads, and the casino floor is covered with a variety of vibrant attractions. Duke and Gonzo whirl around and around in the carousel-like casino bar while they consume their beverages. Gonzo begins to experience the fear, the dreadful condition of a trip gone wrong as the lights and the incessant movement start to wear him out. Duke isn't willing to let up because he thinks they have discovered the major nerve of the American dream. That night, after consuming a full sheet of blotter acid, Duke discovers Gonzo bathing while listening to White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane. Gonzo asks Duke to toss the radio into the bathtub at the song's peak so he can get higher, as he's obviously on the verge of a furious acid trip. After Duke eventually succeeds in making Gonzo see reason, Gonzo quickly descends into a state of catatonic despair brought on by drugs. The 1960s in San Francisco were the beginning of Duke's personal involvement with psychedelic substances. There was a feeling of triumph against the forces of old and evil for a time when a generation of young people came to a head in a long fine flash in the late 1960s, even if it may not have meant much in the long run. Despite Duke's happy memories of the counterculture wave, the wave eventually broke and rolled back. The enormous room service bill that Duke and Gonzo had racked up is brought to their attention the next day. Gonzo promptly flies back to Los Angeles leaving Duke with the debt since they are unable to pay it. Duke chooses to board the Great Red Shark and return to Los Angeles after deciding it is necessary to leave. He reaches Baker, a ghost town in the desert, before going insane and breaking down. Even with Gonzo gone, he has continued to use drugs heavily, and it is starting to seem as if he would never return home. When Duke phones Gonzo, he is advised to return to Las Vegas because he has been assigned to cover the National Conference of District Attorneys Conference on Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs, and that a room at the Flamingo and a white Cadillac has been arranged for him there. 
Duke makes the decision to return to Vegas since Gonzo is already on his way. After picking up the caddy, Duke arrives to the Flamingo to see Gonzo having checked in with Lucy, a mysterious girl of undefined age. Gonzo stupidly gave acid to Lucy, a stray from Montana, on the aircraft. Gonzo is persuaded by Duke to transfer Lucy to a separate hotel, and they then go back to their depleting supply of narcotics. Duke spends the remainder of the night in a drug-induced slumber after Gonzo brought a bottle of adrenochrome from Los Angeles. The next day, Duke and Gonzo go to the drug conference for district attorneys and find themselves in a room with 1,500 law enforcement officers. The drug specialists mischaracterize the drug culture as a group of deranged maniacs because they are extremely ignorant about drug usage and consumers. Duke adds as they go out, poor bastards don't know mescaline from macaroni. Duke and Gonzo wind up at a North Vegas cafe after spending the rest of the day doped up. There, Duke and Gonzo discuss their quest for the American dream with the chef, Lou. Is it the psychiatrist's club from years ago? Lou inquires about a disco in Vegas. Lou claims that the club is temporarily closed for renovation and is violent and drug-filled. When Duke and Gonzo return to the club later, they discover it has completely burnt down. Gonzo returns to Los Angeles the next morning, leaving Duke with yet another outrageous hotel bill. Duke is almost out of money, and the white caddy is wrecked. Duke will also smuggle this bill, but first he goes back to Circus Circus and runs into Bruce. Duke tells Bruce that he has discovered the American dream at Circus Circus when they are both seated at the rotating bar. The casino owner had dreamed of joining the circus since he was a little boy. Bruce remarks, now the bastard has his own circus and a license to steal, too. Duke adds he feels completely assured before leaving Vegas. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.